Hi guys, my name is Rachel and today I am here to do a review on A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the sequel to the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy which I have right behind me here. This series started out as a trilogy then Sarah J Maas released a novella called A Court of Frost and Starlight and then she's now continuing on with a second trilogy adding to the series. So this is technically the fourth book I suppose to the A Katara series and I just finished it. I absolutely loved it. I have so many thoughts to get out. This video will contain spoilers for this book and since it is the fourth book in the series it will contain spoilers for the previous books so if you have not read the Akatar series and you do plan to or if you haven't read A Court of Silver Flames yet I highly recommend do not watch this video because I will be talking a lot of spoilers. Let's start off with the plot though. So the original series follows Feyre who is a human and her sisters are Elaine and Nesta and the Akatar series follows Feyre throughout her journey where she falls in love with Rhys, a fey male and her her sisters Elaine and Nesta get turned into Fae and loads happens in that series. It's great. I love it. This book follows Feyre's sister Nesta who was turned into a Fae in the previous books. This takes place after A Court of Wings and Ruin where the war with Highburn was going on. So a lot of this book deals with Nesta's trauma and PTSD after that war. This book was fantastic. It started out a bit slow. It started out with Nesta in the city of Valaris and basically she's just drinking herself to death, screwing every guy she sees. She's not looking after herself. She's really really skinny, she's not eating, she's just absolutely a disaster and this is all because of the trauma of the war and she is also grieving the death of her father from the Highburn War. So as we saw in A Court of Frost and Starlight, Nesta just has absolutely no interest in being with her sisters or her family, the rest of the fame. She just wants to be left on her own. This is her way of dealing with the grief and dealing with the aftermath of the Highburn War. So our story follows with Cassian who, if you've read the Akatar series, you know exactly who he is. He is a fey male. He is a very, very big character in the series. He's absolutely brilliant. So the series starts off with Cassian visiting Nesta and telling her that her sister Feyre, who is High Lady, and her mate Rhys, who is High Lord, they request a visit with her. So Nesta has been using Feyre and Rhys's money to buy drink and to just completely waste it on absolutely nothing. So Cassian brings Nesta to see Feyre and Rhys and Feyre tells Nesta that they're cutting her off, they're not giving her any more money. They're also taking Nesta away from her home, home, which is a little shabby little place that is just a complete mess. So they're taking that away from her and basically they are sending her to the House of Wind where she has to train every single morning with Cassian and she also has to spend her afternoons in the library helping just, you know, shelf books and stuff for the priestesses. As expected, Nesta is completely against this idea but as her home is being taken away from her she doesn't really have any choice so she goes up to the House of Wind. So every morning Cassian brings Nesta to go train and every single morning Nesta just refuses to train. She just sits on a rock, she just watches him. Feyre and the others tell Nesta that if she refuses to train they will just dump her in the human lands. That's obviously not something she wants. Cassian eventually realises that Nesta won't train because there are other fey males nearby and Nesta is absolutely not the kind of person to make a fool out of herself. So Cassian comes up with a new plan and he brings her to a private training ring where he can train her just one on one with nobody else watching. Cassian makes a bargain with Nesta that if she trains for one hour he will give her anything she wants. Anything at all. The thing with the fey is that if you make a bargain you have to stick by it. So so when you make a bargain with someone, a tattoo appears on their body and you physically cannot break from that bargain. It has to be done. Nesta agrees to this knowing she can get whatever she wants from Cassian in the future. So she agrees to one hour of training. But after the first hour, she realises she'd actually like a second hour and she tells Cassian that this one is on the house. So that is the beginning of Nesta's training with Cassian. She ends up going every single morning and she ends up actually really, really enjoying it because she doesn't want to feel weak anymore. She doesn't want to be a mewling kitten, I think she describes herself as. She just wants to be able to be strong, to be able to look after herself, to be able to look after those she loves. I was very interested when Cassian made this bargain with Nesta, especially offering her anything in return. And I was really excited to see later in the book what Nesta would choose as this favour. But actually, when she does make the choice, I was actually quite disappointed with what she does choose to get from Cassian, but I'll talk about that later. Nesta is working in the library in the afternoons just to keep her busy, where she just shelves books for a few hours, and she ends up meeting this priestess called Gwyneth, known as Gwyn. When Nesta first meets Gwyn, she's honestly freaking out because she realises that she got her mistress the wrong book, and apparently that's a big deal because her mistress is very, very crazy and a very, very angry person, so Gwyn knows that she will be in serious trouble. So Nesta manages to get the right book, 
and she secretly swaps the books in the mistress's office so Gwyn won't get in trouble and that is the start of it. A beautiful beautiful friendship between Nesta and Gwyn. I love these two. I'll talk about that more in a minute. I have to talk about the House of Wind. The House of Wind is probably the best character. That's right. The house is a freaking character. It is amazing. Oh my god. So so great. So the house doesn't talk or anything but it's a magic house so basically it becomes really close with Nesta. Nesta is obsessed with like romance smutty books and the house apparently loves romance smutty books too so they bond over the romance books. The house almost recommends books to Nesta. It just makes books appear in front of Nesta that the house thinks that Nesta will enjoy and Nesta talks to the house even though it doesn't talk back but it has its own way of communicating by magically making things appear in front of Nesta or making the room warm at night when Nesta is cold. It's just it's so cool. I really really want to live in the house of wind. You can just ask it for anything. You can ask it for chocolate cake and chocolate cake will appear in front of you. <laughs> the house has a very close bond with Nesta. It's actually closest to Nesta than any of the other fae despite her only just moving there and it's really cute. I know it's a house but the relationship between the house of wind and Nesta is super super cute especially the bond about the romance books. I just think it's absolutely hilarious and anytime Nesta is feeling down the house makes something appear in front of her like chocolate cake. The house is described as a mother hen. It just completely wants to make sure Nesta's okay just looks after her. It's actually really cute okay. I'm obsessed with the house. I think it's Oh, probably one of my favourite parts of the book. One thing Nesta discovers when she's working in the library shelving books is she finds that in the, I think it's the lower level, seventh level or something, she realises there's a stairs down to this darkness and it reminds her of things from the war. Nesta almost gets eaten up by this darkness but we find out later on that the darkness is actually the heart of the house and the house has its way of telling Nesta that everybody has darkness within them but that doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad person. And I just thought that was a really cute idea. I wasn't expecting that. I honestly thought the darkness and the lower levels of the library was going to be a big bad villain. <laughs> so that was a really really cute touch. I really liked that. After a few weeks Nesta gets visited by her sister Elaine and typical Nesta. Nesta lashes out at her. She doesn't let anybody get close to her anymore. Anytime any of her family and friends come close to her she just completely says horrible horrible things including to Cassian who we all know deep down she really really loves him but she just completely pushes everyone away. She doesn't feel like she deserves their love. She doesn't want their love. So when Elaine comes to visit Nesta she Again, Nesta says some horrible, horrible things and she blames Elaine for their father's death. So that obviously makes Elaine upset. So Elaine eventually leaves and of course Nesta is there feeling so full of guilt. She feels that Elaine has chosen their sister Feyre instead of her when really all they want to do is have Nesta be with them, have them all be a family. But Nesta just has a lot of guilt, a lot of grief, a lot of trauma, a lot of PTSD. And that is a big part of the book is Nesta dealing with her mental health and her trauma and the aftermath of the Hybern War and what she had to deal with. But also she's dealing with a lot of self-hate. She absolutely despises everything about herself. She doesn't want anyone in her life because she doesn't feel like she deserves that kind of love and care. She pushes everyone away. She says horrible, horrible things to people. And it, honestly, it breaks my heart. That's uh, just... It really, really was hard to read about. I just wanted to throw my arms around Nessa and give her the biggest hug because she's such a strong character deep down, but she just didn't believe that. But that was one thing I loved about the training with Cassian. You can see Nesta growing more and more confident, more strong, braver, a lot healthier too, a lot more confident. I just loved reading about all the training. Honestly, reading about the training with Nesta and Cassian made me want to learn like how to fight. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but honestly, just self-defense and just being able to look after myself, being able to know that I can protect myself. I just love reading about it. It's something I would absolutely love to do but honestly I wouldn't mind a handsome fey male being the one to teach me. <laughs> so we find out more about the villain of this story. We go back to the gang with Feyre and Rhys and Asriel and Amran and everybody and we find out that one of the human queens, Briallan, is actually in league with Kosche who is the bone carver's brother. So they are looking for what is known as the Dread Trove. The Dread Trove consists of three items. The mask which can bring people back from the dead, the harp which opens any doors physically or otherwise. It can even move between worlds and the crown which allows you to control other people even if they have their mental shields up. So Koste is technically trapped but with the dread trove he's able to break free so Elaine offers to go and find this dread trove but of course Nesta despite the horrible things she said to her sister she loves her sister she doesn't want her sister in harm's way so Nesta offers to go find the dread trove instead. Nesta gets a bit angry with Feyre and asks her why she can't go and look for the dread trove and that's when Feyre reveals to her family that she is pregnant which we knew already from the court of Frost and Starlight but seeing everyone's reactions was really sweet. I loved reading the training between Cassian and Nesta but one thing I loved even more was when other
older people started to join the training. It was just so much fun to read about. So Nesta has formed a strong bond with Gwyn, the priestess from the library, but she's also formed a friendship with Emery, who is a fae who runs a shop, and basically Nesta tries to convince them to join training, and eventually they do. So Nesta, Gwyn, and Emery have this really, really strong friendship, and it's absolutely probably the best part of the book is their friendship. They're just so amazing. It is so beautiful seeing Nesta actually build friendships and actually letting people like be kind to her and love her and care about her. The bond between these three just makes me so so happy. I love the girl power. They're very very strong, independent and beautiful and powerful powerful amazing women and I just loved reading about them. They're just Oh, I just want to be part of their friendship. They just care so, so much about each other. And they all kind of admit that they have a past that they don't want to speak about, including Nesta. Nesta doesn't want to tell these two women who have now become their friends about her past, about how she kind of lost herself. She just doesn't want them to know about her because she just thinks that they will completely leave her and not want to be her friend anymore, which is really sad because that is not the case at all. They've formed such a strong bond and it's so, so beautiful. I love the women in this. It's just freaking amazing. They're powerful. They're beautiful. Beautiful, they're fantastic. Oh, I love them so much. So Nesta Gwyn and Emery, as well as some other priestesses, end up coming to training, and even Asriel starts training them along with Cassian. And the women decide that they want to be the new Valkyries. The Valkyries were ancient female warriors who were absolutely kick-ass. They just were amazing in battle, amazing in combat, they're just so so powerful, so so strong. And Nesta Gwyn and Emery decide that they want to be the new Valkyries. So they do their typical fighting training with Cassian, while they also do some mind stilling techniques. That that the Valkyries used in the past. This kind of like a meditation thing where they kind of control their breathing and control their thought and it just helps them remain in control. So in order to look for the Dread Trove, Nesta finally decides to scry. I don't really know how the scrying works. Like basically Nesta uses things like bones and stuff to try and mentally look for it in her mind. She ends up failing the first time but that night she has a really bad dream where the cauldron from the original series that turned her into a fae is taking over her and she wakes up screaming and Reese kind of appears out of nowhere and helps her and then she comes back to her when she hears Cassian's voice and Cassian stays in a chair by her bed all night making sure she's okay. They're just so so cute honestly I just love them. I mean everyone who's read this book knows there are a lot a lot of sex scenes and sexual scenarios which is great to read about too. Sarah J Maas does write sex scenes in her other books but I felt like these were definitely the best well written that I've read by her. I think they were absolutely so so well written. So great to read about. Really really enjoyed them but I just also really love the cute moments with Nesta and Cassian just where they show that they actually do care so much about each other. They're just so cute. <laughs> there has been a bit of confusion about what Nesta's power actually is ever since she left the cauldron and she herself isn't entirely sure and she's also just afraid to find out. But after that dream with the cauldron and Reese saves her, Reese finds out that Nesta's power is pure death. So it is a big deal. <laughs> so with the rest of her family and friends with her, Nesta tries to scry again and she finds out the mask is in a place called the Bog of Urid. So Asriel, Cassian and Nesta go off to the Bog to find this mask. Apparently it's a really really dangerous place and there are monsters and creatures there that are just completely trapped there because they can't go anywhere else. So they go there and Asriel ends up getting shot in the wing by one of Eris's missing soldiers. So Eris is a fey male from the Autumn Court and he is in a secret alliance with Reese and Cassian and all them to try and go against Bri Allen, the human queen, because Eris finds out that his dad is actually in league with his human queen. Eris is honestly my least favourite character in this book. I just could not care less about him. Every time he came up I just did not care. <laughs> I just did not like him. Azariel gets shot in the bog by Eris's missing soldiers. Cassian leaves Nesta in a tree just to go save Azriel and he tells her not to move. But of course a half an hour passes by, Cassian still hasn't come back and Nesta decides to get down the tree to try and find him. What happens then is a creature known as a Kelpie leaves the water and basically drags Nesta under the water. So the Kelpie starts like attacking her face and kind of kissing her I think. It's, it's It was weird. What happens then is Nesta, because she was made by the cauldron, the mask, which is actually under the water, ends up being drawn to her and she puts on the mask and she kills the Kelpie and she also rises back up to the water where she is in complete control of the mask and she is able to raise the dead. But thankfully she has enough self-control to take off the mask because there is a risk that if someone puts on the mask that they can just completely never take it off and that's a problem. <laughs> so Cassian and Azriel had killed all of Eris's missing soldiers minus two. So they bring those two soldiers back to Reese's house and they basically think that the soldiers are being controlled controlled by the crown which is worn by Brie Allen. Once being controlled by the crown they don't have any clue what they're doing, they don't have any control over themselves, their eyes are glassy, they just don't realise what they're doing. So Eris is obviously upset that his soldiers have been killed when it's not actually their fault, which I do understand but 
you know, self-defense. <laughs> in order to learn about swords, Cassian brings Nesta to it where they forge swords and the blacksmith ends up letting her hammer down some swords. So she hammers down three swords and eventually they end up being sent back to Reese because the blacksmith says these are cursed. So because Nesta was hammering them, she ended up accidentally putting her power into them. So these three weapons are made. Amran thinks that these swords showing up is actually a sign that Reese should be high king and rule over all seven courts. But Reese has absolutely no interest in that. He knows Vera wouldn't be interested in being high queen they're more than happy just being high lady and high lord to stop the night court one of the things i loved in this book and i was hoping it would happen and it did is i really wanted tamlin to show up i know that's weird i know everybody hates tamlin but i feel like he's such an interesting character you almost enjoy hating him so when nesta cassian and eris meet at the spring court they hear a growl and of course tamlin comes out tamlin is the fey male from the spring court who ended up bringing Feyre over the wall in the first book and the very very start of the first book a court of thorns and roses He's been a very up and down character. In the first book you kind of love him but then later on he turns out to be a horrible, horrible, abusive asshole so you end up hating him. But I always found his character to be really interesting and I really enjoy when he shows up. So Nesta completely stands her ground and threatens him and she does the death point which she did with the King of Highburn and the other books where she pointed at him which is kind of like a death promise. And Nesta almost gives that death promise to Tamlin and he ends up being actually frightened of her which is really fun. <laughs> Tamlin, oh, he's, he's just an interesting character. I don't feel bad for him. He's a horrible, horrible person, but he's just so interesting to read about. There's honestly so much to talk about in this book that I can't cover everything, but one thing that was a huge, huge part of this book is when we find out about Feyre's pregnancy. So basically they find out that Feyre's baby has wings, which is not a good thing because Feyre's fey body is not built to birth a baby with wings, so basically they find out that she's going to die. And we find out later on, which really annoyed me, that Feyre and Reese had made a bargain where if one dies, the other dies. It was meant to be like a romantic gesture kind of thing that they love each other so much that they can't live without each other but when I read that I was like why <laughs> why would you do that <laughs> so basically that means that if Feyre dies in pregnancy not only will she die but the baby will die and Reese will die so it's three characters we would lose so I was just really stressing out at this point I was really really stressing out <laughs> and the thing is is that they kept this from Feyre for so long Feyre didn't know about the danger of giving birth to this child and Nesta is the one who ends up telling her but it, she tells her out of anger when she is annoyed at Amran and she just wants to hurt somebody and she tells Feyre and my heart broke reading Feyre's reaction. Feyre just has her hand on her stomach. She loves her baby son already without him even being born yet. She loves him so so much and her face just breaks and she's just absolutely devastated. Not for herself but for her child and for Reese. So it was just really really sad. Even Nesta felt so guilty. Of course they make up later on but it's just it was really really stressing me out knowing this information. <laughs> you know Feyre has been the main character in the original trilogy. We love Feyre. We love Reese. We want them to to have a baby and just be happy together. But I was really, really stressing. <laughs> After Nesta gives Feyre this information about the danger of giving birth to her son, everyone is absolutely fuming at her. They didn't want Feyre to find out this way. Reese tells Cassian that if he doesn't get Nesta out of here, Reese will absolutely kill her. So to punish Nesta, Cassian takes Nesta on a five day hike and Nesta basically doesn't speak for days. She doesn't say a single word. Cassian doesn't really talk to her. She sleeps as far away from the fire as possible because since the start of the book, we found out that Nesta just cannot be around fire and we find out later on that the reason for her fear of fire is because the crackles of the fire actually remind her of the snap of her father's neck from the Highburn War so she just cannot stand that sound and it's really really sad but eventually she does kind of get over that she learns to deal with it. The hike was really interesting to read about. Sarah J Mass actually went to I think New Zealand herself and actually did a hike and this is what inspired this whole scene in the book. So eventually after a few days of not speaking Nesta finally just breaks down sobbing and she just just completely just loses it. She lets out all the hurt and the pain that she's been holding on to and bottling up and she completely just tells Cassian exactly what's going through her head and about how she doesn't deserve love. She hates herself basically. She starts talking about her dad. It's just she completely just lets out everything she's been holding on to and Cassian just holds her and it's just a really heartwarming moment between them. I just wanted to give Nesta the biggest hug. I just love her so much. I care so much about Nesta. She really has grown on me in, with this book alone. But the original trilogy, I just, I didn't feel that 
kind of close connection with her and after this book I think she's one of my favourite Sarah J Mass characters. She's just completely just stolen my heart in every way. She's just amazing and she deserves all the love in the world even if she doesn't think so. So this moment was really really touching. Cassian is holding her. Cassian is so great like he just comforts her, he reassures her, he speaks about his own experiences and how he has dealt with a lot too and just tells her that she does deserve happiness and love and it's just it's beautiful. They're so so beautiful. They're perfect together. I love them so much. After this hike they go back and Nesta starts training as normal with Cassian and with the women. Eventually Nesta ends up finding the harp because when she goes to a music ceremony with Gwyn she somehow ends up scrying without even realizing it and she discovers that the harp is in the prison where they keep a lot of the dangerous creatures. So Nesta and Cassian end up going to the prison to try and retrieve the harp and while there they do get the harp but Nesta accidentally reveals their location to Brie Allen and then when they're trying to escape in time the door to Alanthus's cell who is basically a death lord he cannot be killed his cell door is open so he escapes and Cassian ends up fighting him and telling Nesta to run so while Nesta's running she realizes that she just can't leave him behind so she ends up using the harp to transport back to him Nesta uses the sword that she had hammered before the maid sword which is infused with her power to actually slay Lanthus. it's a really good scene it's a lot of action and combat and Nesta just being a freaking badass I loved it it was great and then they transport back to Reese's and Cassian gets all bandaged up. Cassian had asked Nesta before what he names her sword and she names it Ataraxia which is a cool name apparently it means inner peace so I thought that was really really nice I love that I love when people name their swords in books and movies and tv shows I just think it's super cool I always wonder what I would name my own sword. <laughs> After Tamlin caught Eris, Nesta and Cassian meeting up at the spring court Eris is worried that Tamlin will reveal their alliance so basically in order to ensure Eris that the alliance is still secure they decide to go to a ball and they use Nesta to almost like make him realize that they're still okay so Elaine reveals that Nesta is an amazing dancer which kind of came out of nowhere I don't know if that is mentioned in one of the previous books and I just don't remember and Cassian realizes that's why she's so good on her feet when they're doing the training so Moore comes along who is barely in this book but she does come along to teach Nesta the necessary dances and at this ball Nesta is dancing with Eris and he is like obsessed with her because she's a fantastic dancer and she's like beautiful and everything so he's like obsessed with her and he tells Reese that he will do anything for her hand in marriage but one thing I loved about the ball was that when Eris was dancing with Nesta despite it being the plan all along Cassian gets very very jealous and cuts into the dance and takes Nesta for a spin himself. I mean one thing that does annoy me in Sarah J Mass's books is that the fey males are always so territorial of the woman they love which I mean there's being cute and protective and things like that but there's a difference between being protective and jealous and they're just being completely territorial but anyway it wasn't too bad he's no worse than Reese <laughs> or Rowan with uh, Selena in the Throne of Glass series but anyway so Cassian cuts in and they end up dancing and Nesta just has this big beautiful smile on her face Nesta doesn't smile often because she has a lot of self-hatred so seeing that smile on her face is just so so sweet I loved reading about it they're so cute dancing together it was beautiful one of my favorite scenes of the book was the winter solstice so basically they all gather up in the house. I suppose it's like Christmas they all get each other gifts and they just hang out and drink and talk and chat and laugh and it's just really really sweet seeing everybody together again. So Nesta hadn't gotten a present for anyone. I mean it's not like she had money to spend. They had kind of cut her off so it's not like she had any money to buy anyone anything. Feyre and Elaine being her sisters obviously got her a present and they got her loads of like almost book vouchers so she could buy all the books she needs which is great because that's my ideal present is anything to do with books. <laughs> and then Azriel got Nesta a present too which I was very surprised about but I really really loved it I thought it was so sweet so we got her kind of this like reading light so she doesn't have to squint in the dark when she's reading her books anymore and Nesta just wasn't expecting it and she just completely throws her arms around him and they hug and it's just a really cute friendly moment because there are a few moments in the book with Nesta and Azriel having a bit of banter a bit of back and forth not much but a little bit and I really enjoyed those moments I kind of wish we saw more of their friendship but when Azriel got her a present for winter solstice I thought that was very very sweet of him he's a oh I love Azrael. I just want to marry him. He is just amazing. I love him so, so much. <sighs> I love Cassian too though. I love them all. They're all amazing. They're all my precious babies. I just want to protect them at all costs. <laughs> of course Cassian also got Nesta a present. He got her like this orb thing that plays music which is really really sweet but instead of just accepting it and thanking him Nesta gets a bit angry and she's like no I can't take this. She absolutely refuses to accept it and she tells him to return it despite the fact that he went through so much trouble to get this present for her and they end up arguing but Nesta actually ends up crying and so does Cassian and it's just because Nesta admits that she doesn't deserve 
deserve it and she doesn't deserve him and she kind of implies that she's loved him since the start but she, without saying the words but her admitting to him that she just doesn't feel like she deserves him just completely broke me inside I was so upset I should probably mention this book made me cry at least three times <laughs> but uh, this scene was just so sad and then Cassian of course being his beautiful lovely self he's just beautiful in every way he just reassures her he comforts her he's there for her they're so cute I can't deal they're just so cute and then of course we get some very very hot sex scenes but that's another story <laughs> they basically promise to be together forever they don't want to be with anyone else they don't say the words I love you but they do say that they will just be together forever kind of thing they kind of imply it and it's just a really cute moment and it's when they feel the mating bond between them so we find out that Cassian and Nesta are actually mates so with Faye so a mate is basically your soulmate it's the person you're supposed to end up with after that night Cassian goes away for a few days to do some work with the Illyrians so Nesta, Gwyn and Emery end up all staying in the house of wind having a little sleepover and it's really really cute and they end up making like these friendship bracelets which end up actually being very important later on because Nesta when she's making these bracelets she didn't realize that she accidentally put some of her power into them and when she's making a wish she wishes they would all get out into the world someday and they would always find their way back to each other this ends up being really important later on when Nesta, Gwyn and Emery are taken in the middle of the night to participate in the blood rite. The blood rite is basically this kind of trial thing that takes place for like a week and they have to try and reach the top of the Ramiel mountain. It's a whole big thing. It's almost kind of like the Hunger Games. They're all like fighting each other, killing each other, but they're trying to reach this destination. But the three women are all separated when they do get taken to do the blood rites. Vanessa realizes that her friendship bracelet that they made ends up actually glowing in the direction that her friends are in. So Nesta ends up finding Emery and saves her and they, they're together and then they're of course looking for Gwyn. After a while they do find Gwyn and the three of them are working together to stay alive. They end up reaching this bridge that they end up chopping down after they've crossed it so no one else can cross it. The blood rite is also a place that banishes their magic. They basically are like humans, they can't heal quickly so any injury they have can be fatal. So when Gwyn gets shot in the arrow and starts bleeding everywhere it's a big deal. Nesta and Emery start dragging her and they end up climbing up a tree and staying there. So instead of just staying up in the tree until the blood rite is over and just completely staying safe until it finishes, Gwyn is determined to get to the top of the mountain despite her leg bleeding out. She's just completely determined not to be broken anymore and this is a really important part of the book because this is when Nesta, Gwyn and Emery talk about their past experiences. So there's a trigger warning for rape and sexual assault in this book because we find out that Gwyn has actually been raped two years before by a hybrid soldier which honestly really shocked me and it really upset me. Gwyn was basically trying to save these children and she's seen her sister get beheaded right in front of her. We also find out about Emery's past where her father had been completely beating her and abusing her. He had actually been abusing her mother beforehand and Emery being only young obviously did nothing to save her but of course what could she do? She was only young. Her father went too far one day and completely beat her mother to death and then he took his rage out on Emery and then Nesta explains her own past about her father, about the Highburn War, about how horrible she's been to people and you know how she kind of was dealing with it with the drinking and the casual sex and everything and it's just a big whole thing. So the three women completely comfort each other. They're they just have such a beautiful friendship. They don't care about the other's past and it doesn't change how much they love them. If anything, it probably brings them closer together. Their friendship honestly made me so happy. It's been, it's become one of my favorite friendships in any book ever. I just thought they were so amazing together, the three of them. I hope Sarah J Maas doesn't kill any of these women because they're just so, so great. If she kills any of them in a future book, I'm actually gonna be so upset. <laughs> but that was a really strong moment in the book. It was very, very emotional to read about. And so because of Gwyn's past, Gwyn decides she just want to feel that broken anymore so she is the one who kind of pushes the other two to reach the top of Ramiel Mountain and win this whole blood rite. So basically near the top of the mountain they're being hunted down by Emery's cousin Bellius as well as some other fey males. So Nesta offers to hold them back while Emery and Gwyn reach the top. So Gwyn refuses to leave Nesta on her own and Nesta uses a pressure point on her body that Cassian had taught her to completely render Gwyn unconscious. Emery carries Gwyn up the mountain to reach the top. Almost like a Sam Frodo kind of scenario. That's what I thought of when I read this scene. I was reminded of the Return of the King when Sam carries Frodo to the top. But anyway, Nesta holds her ground and fights the Fae males and eventually she kills all of them except for Bellius and Bellius nearly ends up killing her. But Cassian shows up and kills him and just as Nesta runs into his arms, Cassian tells her he's going to kill her. So basically Cassian had been captured by Briallan who was wearing the crown so she has mind control over Cassian. So this bit really had me on edge. I was like oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> Basically, Nesta refuses to tell Briallen where the dread trove is. So Briallen says a single word, kill. But she doesn't specify that Cassian needs to kill Nesta. He, she doesn't specify anything, she just says the word kill. So it looks like Cassian is about to stab Nesta, but he ends up plunging the sword into his own heart, or so we think. And then Nesta just is completely, like she completely loses it. Her power goes crazy and, and she ends up killing Bri Allen. But oh my god, my heart was in my mouth. I was like, Cassian, is he okay? Oh my god, my freaking heart. But he ended up being okay. It was all fine. I literally start sobbing and then like two pages later he was fine and I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But he's fine. I'm so happy he's okay. I forgot to talk about the bargain. So the bargain that Festa... Festa? The bargain that Nesta made with Cassian earlier ended up being that Nesta just told Cassian to leave. Basically when they had an argument she told him to go to the House of Wind. When Cassian accidentally says that he is shackled to her by being her mate, he is not allowed to speak to her until she speaks to him. Which is like completely... Okay, <laughs> I was just disappointed with the bargain part, but anyway. Then we go back to Feyre and she is giving birth, even though she wasn't due to give birth for, I think, another few weeks, but she is giving birth and there's blood everywhere. It's horrible, it's horrible, it's just so traumatic and it's just, oh. And there's nothing they can do. They're trying everything they can. They just cannot save Feyre. So Nesta does this thing where she has the mask on her, the crown and the harp. And basically it's almost like she stops time when she plucks the 26th string of the harp and she tells Feyre that she loves her and it's really sweet and she basically makes a bargain with the cauldron that if the cauldron shows her how to save Feyre and the baby and Reese, then in return she will give back all of her power that she took from the cauldron in the first place when she became Fey. So Nesta ends up actually saving Feyre and therefore Reese and the baby too and it's just a really really nice moment and I loved Reese because he just completely got down his knees and just like held Nesta's hands and was thanking her and Nesta just throws her arms around him and it's a really nice moment because Nesta and Reese kind of hate each other for this entire book so to see that little moment was just really really sweet he's just so grateful to her not for his own life but for Feyre's and the babies in return Reese is just constantly buying Nesta presents and it's just really really sweet and Nesta tells him to stop but that he can definitely throw her and Cassie in a mating ceremony to basically thank her and it's really really sweet and we see Feyre with the baby who she named Nyx everyone's kind of happy and alive and just loving each other and it's all just beautiful so the story ends with Feyre, Nesta and Elena Lane, three sisters, also with Feyre's baby Nyx. They go to their father's graveyard and it's just a really, really beautiful but sad moment. And Nesta ends up kind of staying back for a bit. It's just really sad. Nesta has just felt so much guilt over her father's death since the start of the book. And just to see her kind of let go at last and say goodbye in a way, it's just really, really sad. The book ends with Cassian flying overhead while Nesta is at the graveyard. You know, he's just protecting her and looking after her. And that's pretty much where our story ends. It was just beautiful, I have to say. Obviously, the next book will deal more with Kostche because while Briallen is now dead, Kostche is still alive, so he's obviously going to be the big villain in the next one, I assume. I absolutely loved this book. It definitely wasn't perfect, but I don't care. I still gave it five stars because it just gave me every single emotion. Like, it made me upset. It made me happy. It gave me such cute moments. I had really great sex scenes. I freaking loved this book. One of my favourite parts of the book, as I said, was Gwyn, Nesta and Emery's friendship. I just love the girl power. They're just three very strong strong and beautiful and powerful women. Absolutely love them. But one other thing I loved about this book was that I really found myself relating to Nesta in a lot of ways. You know, she, she just has a lot of self-guilt. She just has a lot of, you know, self-doubt and she doesn't believe in herself and she doesn't think she's good enough and she doesn't think she deserves good things. She doesn't think she deserves all the love and care that she has in the world. I saw parts of myself in her and I really connected with her. So she has definitely become one of my all-time favourite characters. I just think she's a beautiful, strong woman who needs to believe in herself. And seeing her character development from the start of this book to the end was honestly a journey. Like she has been through so much in the previous books and she's been through so much in this book and she just completely owns it. She just goes through it. She deals with it. She just ends up becoming this beautifully strong, powerful woman who believes in herself and who realizes she deserves love. She deserves everything good in the world. She deserves to live. It's just a beautiful, beautiful journey. I really loved Nesta's journey. I could honestly reread this book again for straight away. It was just brilliant. Honestly, I could talk about this book all day. I feel like this video is very long. <laughs> Basically, this book was fantastic. 
fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I'm really, really upset that we have to wait so long for the next book because I just want to dive right in. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. Like, I literally cannot wait for the next book. Sarah J Mass is freaking fantastic as always. I met her in person before and she was just so, so lovely, but I would love to meet her again after COVID. I hope she gets to do more book signings in the future, maybe by the time the next book comes out. I just really want to thank her. <laughs> She's fantastic. This book was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was happy. It was sad. It was emotional. It was really hot. It was brilliant. I loved it. I loved it so much. I have a lot of thoughts about this book. It's definitely going to be on my mind for a while. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I feel like this video is way too long already. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to me. Also, leave me a comment and just say hello. I would really love that. Also, let me know what you thought of this book if you read it yourself. And I hope you guys have a lovely day. Slan live!